brand name, that's a really important thing, actually. So if you're a company and you're selling other brands, I mean, you might want to think about that as well. Um, but also um, that should be reflected with the, the product as well or the brand name that you're creating as well. So a successful brand name should be carefully considered. So I've sort of listed out a few things that actually you should be looking for when you're creating a new brand, when you're creating, uh, trying to come up with a new brand name, it has to be easy to pronounce because if it's not, you're, you're going to be in trouble. You know, I've seen brands where you, they put weird names in and, and it just doesn't flow off the tongue. And that's where you have to think, can you repeat it a couple of times? And, you know, is it easy to spell? You know, can people spell it as well? Like, you know, you want them to read it easily and make it memorable. So if it's short and snappy and it's like, I, I know that, you know, it doesn't have, you know, and it doesn't have to be a three letter word all the time or whatever. It could be something like, I quote, Toys R Us. I mean, that you remember that because that's something it's memorable and it says what it is as well. So and there's an emotional connection with the customer. They know it sells toys. I know they're no longer, but, you know, um, but it says it reflects the product and service that it's offering as well. Also, is is the brand name cross cultural? There are mishaps where certain brands, actually luxury brands, they change their brand name just for that market because it might sound extremely rude or it could be something completely different in a different market as well so you know if it's translated into indian or chinese sometimes the translation does not compute with the the people in that particular country on that location mm -hmm. also being distinct and flexible as well can it be flexible as a name you know it can it what i mean is is it distinct enough and flexibility can it if you're going to extend your brand can it extend to several little sub marks as well sub brands within it as well and you know it's just thinking about that as well and the competitive advantage of having a unique brand name as well so you know that's going to be if someone's going to remember it if it's easy to spell you know, people can connect you know you have that advantage over somebody on amazon that that's got the same name or a a weird Chinese name, <laughs> brand name that you do not remember. It's like, well, that doesn't even make sense, you know. Um, and you know, trademark yes. it as well. So if it's trademark, that's that also helps you in terms of having a unique brand name as well, because that's important as you grow as a bigger brand as well. So, so I'm uh, yeah. curious on that for the brand name. Yes. Does it? Do you have a preference over? You know, like making up words like Google or Rapala is a big fishing brand. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those aren't really real words until these companies created them versus having a, a name that, you know, exists, uh, words that exist already. So just to make something up like for my company, if I was going to say, online product optimization company or something like that First, you know? yeah and also longer versus shorter is it do you have preferences with that as long as it makes sense to the brand i mean if it's way too wordy and if you're going to make that into a, a by domain that's going to be that word you know how do you chop that down into a domain as well that's that's that mm -hmm. works so it it has to make sense to the brand and if it is something like that and it it actually makes sense then there's no reason why you can't one thing i also forgot about the you know the brand name it could be a um a house of brands as well so you could be a having for example virgin so they have things like virgin active virgin leisure virgin cruises and you know you could be sort of um, have a brand name that can house other brands underneath so if you are a wholesaler or you know an arbitrage you could think about that as well come up come up with something unique but i will show you some case studies as well in where successful brands have done that as well um but yeah having a company name and a, a it has, still has to be memorable at the end of the day, if it's really boring and it's like, well, that just sounds like the other person. And there are so many names. If you go on to, you know, uh, USPTO, you know, you, you see the same names over and over and it's like, well, what's the difference? And then you're trying to compete with these people with the same names, if it can be unique. And some sometimes if it is, it, as long as it rolls off the tongue, you think it's memorable, is it playful? You know, what sort of brand do you have? If, if, you know, it doesn't really matter as long as you can cover all those things, it's, it's memorable. It's, it rolls off the tongue. It's easy to pronounce. It's, you know, and, you know, it reflects what your brand or your company are all about.